Today I'm going to show you how to fix a leak in uh, one of your black or gray water tanks. We've got a pretty gnarly compound crack there. That's actually cracked all the way around and up that way and then up into this little groove there also. And you can see by all the manner of stuff coming out of it that it's been leaking for a while and this is the black water tank so that's all shit residue right there. So the first thing you need to do is make sure you clean out the tank. You want to uh, get it completely flushed out, flush it three or four times with clean water, um, maybe let it sit overnight with some bleach in there, and then get a, an RV tank cleaning wand and just get in there and spray the shit out of it. Um, you want that to get as clean as possible on the inside, especially if you do the full, uh, full high quality patch that we're going to do. Um, you can do just an external patch, which should work fine for most of you. Uh, but I'm going to do a full, um, you know, drill out the end of the cracks and squirt stuff up in there fixed also. So um, if, you, if you're in an emergency and you just need to do a quick fix, um, you can apply the outside part of this. It'll be really quick, really easy. But I'm going to do the full bore method for all you guys that want a, a lifetime permanent fix that you can feel comfortable with. So what you're going to need, you're going to need some fiberglass window screen. You can get this at Home Depot or on Amazon. Pretty cheap. Do not try to use fiberglass cloth like this. I've been there, I've done that. The ABS cement does not fully impregnate through this stuff and you don't end up with a very solid, uh, very solid patch. So do not use this fiberglass cloth. You're going to use fiberglass window screen, okay? You need a little jar that you're going to use to dissolve uh, your ABS shavings. You're going to need some sort of ABS scraps that you can cut up for shavings. Um, I'm just using like a 99 cent uh, ABS union there. But if you have an ABS pipe sitting around, you can use that. You cannot use PVC. Do not use white. It's got to be black ABS. All right. And then this is the main stuff you're going to be using. You get this at Home Depot or on Amazon. It's a uh, black ABS cement. And basically what it is, it's like a solvent with ABS dissolved into it. And this is a medium body. Um, I'll see if I can find links to a heavy duty black ABS cement to put links on it. But we're going to make our own heavy duty ABS cement by dissolving some uh, ABS shavings with this stuff here in a minute. And then we're going to use a syringe to squirt up inside our holes and uh, try to get that nice and clean and get the solvent up in there to prepare it for um, repair. And then you'll need a, a drill bit, quarter inch drill bit, and a drill. So it's pretty easy. Uh, let's get started here. Alright. First thing you want to do is clean it. You want to clean the inside and the outside. I'm just going to use uh, vinegar here, straight up vinegar, white vinegar. Make sure you put some sort of drop cloth, cardboard, something down underneath this because you don't want that solvent um, ruining your carpet or your linoleum, whatever you have underneath the tank. Um, if you're working up underneath your trailer, it's not as big of an issue, but I am working in my storage compartment here. See if we can kind of flex that, try to get all that crap out of there. There we go. Yeah, that's a pretty decent crack. And I'm gonna pop that back out. There we go. Alright. Next step is we want to drill relief holes. So basically, at the edges, about an eighth of an inch past each one of these cracks. 
and then right in the middle we're going to drill a relief hole. That's going to stop the crack from spreading in the future. Um, otherwise what can happen is if you just patch it and you just go on your merry day, the next time it flexes, that crack is going to continue. Even though you've patched the outside, the crack is just going to keep going. So we need to stop that crack from spreading any further. So find the edge of your crack and then about an eighth of an inch past it, just drill a quarter inch hole. And I chose quarter inch so that I get my syringe to stick up in there. Because we're going to squirt some ABS cement up in there and some cleaner up in there. Alright, same thing here. That one is mainly to help us join all three of these pieces together because we had a kind of, kind of gnarly corner there. Um, but all you really need is at each end, a hole at each end about an eighth of an inch past the end of the crack. All right. All right, we're gonna take some acetone. Um, you could use a MEK or you could even use a you can kind of use uh, PVC or ABS cleaner, but I, I recommend uh, either MEK or acetone. Um, it acts as a solvent and it'll technically actually glue, uh, glue the pieces together. So we're going to be squirting it up into each of these three holes to clean and prep the top surface inside the tank. That's why we clean the tank so good. And also um, to kind of help glue the crack together from the, from the inside out. So I'm just going to take my syringe here, pour it in the top, plug in the hole. Acetone will eat through just about anything plastic, so make sure that uh, you got something underneath it that's not going to get hurt. Acetone is like nail polish remover. You can get it, you know, at Home Depot, even Walmart uh, in the hardware section, or you can use plain old nail polish remover if you want, but I'm just going to kind of squirt this up here, kind of wiggle and work it. We're kind of cleaning and working this acetone in the crack. Yeah, that's pretty good there. Um, it's impregnated in all these cracks. And so now what we want to do right away is get our ABS cement. We're not going to mix it with anything right now. We're just going to squirt it up in there. Try to start at our highest point here. Try to work it in there.
All right. So here we, we're gonna let that sit. Just let these drain out as much as they can. Uh, we got it all impregnated, all up into that crack. If you can't get it to squeeze out the cracks, that's fine. You're mainly just trying to squirt it up in there to kind of uh, help seal the top as much as you can. But honestly, you're gonna have all kinds of uh, residue up in there and you're not gonna get a very good seal anyway. So um, we're just kind of doubling up our efforts here. You could easily skip that internal step if you wanted to. We're just doing that to be anal and because we want it to be as long of a lasting fix as possible. And this uh, this does leak right down into my storage compartment, so <laughs> I don't want shit all over everything. So we're gonna let that dry. I'll come back and I'll, I'll fill up those holes again. And uh, technically we should be able to get it to e where each of those holes are completely filled up with just the AB ABS cement, and then we'll come back with our fiberglass. That's drying, we're gonna go ahead and make our heavy duty ABS cement. We're gonna take our medium black ABS cement and we're gonna use our shavings. Um, I'll cut to making the shaving video right now. In order to make the ABS shavings that we're gonna dissolve into uh, the ABS cement, we're just gonna use a, a cheap, this is like a 99 cent ABS fitting. You could easily use ABS pipe if you have that lying around. And we're also gonna use our circular saw. That's gonna make it really quick and easy. If you don't want to use a circular saw, you could use a normal saw, you could use a, a rasp or a file, but I like things to be quick. All right, we've got our shavings in a jar. We're just gonna take uh, our, some of our black ABS cement and we're gonna cover those. Basically, we're trying to make a thicker, thicker compound here. And since that's straight solvent mixed with ABS, it should dissolve pretty quickly here. You don't, you want to use a glass jar if you can, um, because the solvent will eat through a lot of different kinds of plastic. You want to probably do this at the beginning of the job so it has plenty of a chance to dissolve. You want all those polymers to be fully suspended in the solution. You don't want to end up, it's not like biscuit dough, you don't want the little clumps in there. You want it to be smooth. So I'm going to let that sit and dissolve. We'll come back to it in a little bit and see how, how our chunks are doing. It's mostly dry. We're going to go ahead and take a razor blade and cut off these little hangers here. Now we'll take some sandpaper. And we're just going to rough up the edges. Sometimes they put a a coating on the outside, like a, a coating to keep it from reacting to chemicals. So by roughing it up, we're preparing the surface and sanding off any coating. Now our dissolved stuff is looking pretty good. It's nice and smooth, no chunks in it. It's been sitting over an hour now. Uh, but it's nice and thick. Let me see if I can show you.
Really good. That'll do the job. So at this point, um, what we want to do is prepare the surface. by taking some acetone and take some of our acetone on a paper towel get it nice and wet just go over the whole area As soon as that's done, you want to go over it with a layer of stuff, and you want to try to get it up in those holes. Thick over there. And I'm just going to take straight, uh, straight stuff and give that a top coat. Kind of help solvent up the thing. Now we're going to take a piece of our window screen and we're just going to set it up in there. Trying to get all the cracks. Just paste it on there with straight. Okay, 
So we let that dry a good six hours. We want that to get nice and dry. And then we'll come back with our heavy duty stuff and give it another coat. But uh, if you weren't gonna do the drilling of the inside part, you could have gone straight to the, the straight to the screen, straight to the, the solvent, and um, you don't even have to use up the chip stuff. If you're in an emergency, just go straight to this stuff, straight to window screen, just put it on there. But uh, we'll let that dry. That'll be our, our base coat, and then we'll come back with the thick stuff on top of that. Uh, really set it on there good. All right, we let that dry overnight, and it's pretty solid now. It's uh, got one layer of the, the heavy stuff, the mesh, one layer of the light stuff, and now we're going to go ahead and put one more layer of the heavy stuff on there. Uh, this will be our final coat. If you had to uh, take off your underbelly lining to get to your tank, um, it wouldn't hurt to go ahead and do one more layer of heavy stuff and then go ahead and do a big another layer of fiberglass window mesh. Um, it doesn't really hurt to make it stronger than it has to be, uh, but since we have easy access to this, this is going to be a permanent seal. Um, it just depends on how much trouble you had to get to or how much trouble you had to go through to get to this in the first place. This one was easy access. If it was uh, down underneath my trailer and I had to take stuff off to get to it, I might do a whole another layer of that stuff. But let's just go ahead and put another layer of uh, goop on there. All right, that's the last of my goop. Um, it may look kind of sloppy, but what we'll do is we'll go back over it with a layer of the thin stuff um, here at the end, but that's pretty much a permanent fix right there. That will probably end up being stronger than the original plastic. While this stuff, the goop itself isn't nearly as strong as the original like uh, polymer, you know, the cross-link polymers going on in there, um, the way it glues everything together and with the, the fiberglass mesh, it should be stronger than it was before. Um, so at this point we're pretty much done. You could do a couple more coats of this. Just make sure that in between every coat you wait probably at least four hours, probably six to eight hours is good. Uh, you want to let it fully cure and dry and then come back and do another coat on top of it. So that's it for this fix. Uh, that'll be a permanent fix. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel and check out my other videos.